If you want to get better at hanging, then this is for you. In this video, I'll cover how to include hanging in your workouts for best results. I'll share how to progress from being an absolute beginner where you can't hang at all with your feet off the ground to going to single arm hang mastery. And I'll share with you the steps to take you to your first hanging goal, which is one minute of unassisted passive hanging and 10 reps of active to passive hanging. First thing we wanna look at doing is how we chalk the hands. So chalking the hands is really important because if you can't grip onto the pull-up bar or the rings or whatever it is that you've got to hang from, then you're really gonna struggle. So I chalk right over this part here on the fingers and a little bit on the palm. You really don't need that much chalk there because the majority of the work is gonna be done here. When you start with your hanging, most people talk about that they can't hang for five seconds or at all. And so a really good place to start is just with feet assistance like this. And what we wanna work on first is a passive hang. The first thing we wanna be working on really is the grip strength and the shoulder flexibility to be able to hang passively with your full body weight. And if that's too much for you, then just grabbing a box like this and taking a little bit of weight in your hands is a really, really good way to work up to a 60 second passive hang. And that really should be your first goal, to be able to do 60 seconds unbroken of a passive hang. So what you'll do is with your feet on a box like this, you'll accumulate between 30 to 90 seconds of hanging in one session. So if you can do 15 seconds and that's all you can do, then you'll do 15 seconds, you'll stop, rest for anywhere from 30 to 60 seconds, jump back up to another 10 or 15 seconds and you record what your accumulated total is. And you wanna be working to increase that accumulated total over time up until you can get up to 90 seconds of accumulated total. And once you can do 90 seconds, that's when you start working towards trying to do 60 seconds of unbroken hanging. And I recommend doing this daily. So you do it six days a week, Monday to Saturday and you always are working at a relatively low intensity. So you're not going to a point where you feel so much fatigue and discomfort in your body the next day that you can't do it. That's not the idea. We're not pushing ourselves to max effort here. We're trying to accumulate strength and accumulate flexibility and accumulate conditioning by doing this regularly rather than doing it sporadically and going to complete exhaustion or failure. So once you can do your accumulated total of 90 seconds of feet assisted hanging daily, and then you work up to being able to do 60 seconds in one go of your feet assisted hanging, now you're ready to start doing passive hanging like this, like what I'm doing now. And you basically repeat the exact same process. So you'll do an accumulated total of 30 to 90 seconds of hanging, until you can get up to doing an unbroken 60 seconds of passive hanging like this. And you just wanna try and use progressive overload. So basically, each day you're recording what your accumulated total is and you're looking to increase the accumulated total from day to day. And you're looking to increase your minimum hold time until you get up to that magic spot where you can do 60 seconds of unbroken hanging. And this is really your first goal. Once you can do 60 seconds of hanging like this, that's your first really big milestone. And just a reminder, you do this at the start of your workout. So this is like a warm up. You know, you can do it before your handstands, before your upper body strength work. Um, whenever you want to do it, it's a really, really good way to warm up because it um, actively warms up the shoulders, the grip, the musculature in your whole upper body. And it's also one of the only things that you'll ever do that decompresses the spine. See, right now, gravity is lengthening my spine out, whereas when I'm standing, gravity is compressing my spine. So right now, gravity is pushing my spine down on itself, which is totally normal. But when you hang, it decompresses the spine. It's really, really nice. Okay, so now that we've got our first milestone, a 60-second hang, the next milestone is to work up towards 10 active to passive hang transitions. So now what your workout starts to look like is you do your 60 second passive hang, rest for a minute, and then you move into doing one to two sets of active to passive hanging. So active to passive hanging is when you're in a passive hang like this, and then you depress your scapula and go into an active hang. This is called active hanging and then back down into a passive hang. And you wanna do this with completely locked straight elbows. Any bend in the elbow, so even if it's like that much, is a failed rep. And 
Of course, we can repeat the process of doing this with feet assistance if you can't do uh, one, at least three reps of active to passive hang like what I'm doing with straight elbows. So to be completely transparent, active and passive hanging is very challenging. If you do this properly to really master it, there's going to be a real developmental leap that you'll go through here because the neuromuscular connection for most people with controlling their scapular movement is very, very weak. So when people think I'm going to depress my scapula, they pull with their elbows as well. They pull with their biceps. It's just a really normal thing for people to do. So by standing on a box like this, you can really develop that neuromuscular connection. And that's the first thing you want to do. You, your first goal here is not to just jump into it and be able to do, you know, five or 10 reps of active passive hanging. The first goal here is to strengthen that neuromuscular connection so the movement's actually happening correctly. So getting on a box, what you want to be doing is you want to take as much weight as you need into your feet so that you can really depress your shoulder blades, hold for three seconds, and then come back down into a passive hang without using your arms. So because my feet are on the box, I mean, I could literally do this with my uh, little fingers here because my feet can take as much weight as I need to. So you use as much weight as you need to and you film yourself and you make sure, like if you see any of that, then what you can do is you can come up and then try to really straighten the arms, depress the shoulder blades, and then lift the weight out of the feet a little bit and eccentrically lower down. But our first goal is to be able to get three to five reps with feet assistance. So we're coming up, holding for three seconds, and then back down. And once you can do that, once you can do three to five reps with straight elbows, then you're ready to get rid of the box. Okay, so now we've got rid of the box, I'm passive hanging, and what I'm working towards now, I'm pulling up, holding for three seconds, back down, one second, up, no fast jerking movements, back down, one second, and what we're doing now is we're working towards uh, 10 reps per set by using progressive overload. Okay, so two sets of this is really, really good. So now let's have a look at what the whole workout looks like. So this stage now, your workout should look like one set of 60 second passive hang, rest for 30 to 60 seconds, and then two sets of active to passive hang transitions. And once you can do 10 reps of active to passive hang transitions for both sets, you're now ready to start working on single arm hanging transitions and single arm active to passive hang. And to see how you do that, just click or tap the screen there to watch my video on hanging mastery.